You are welcome to my channel. Today, I will be addressing Prince Metal or Vesospastic Angina. Vesospastic Angina, that is the current name, or Prince Metal Angina, is all due to coronary artery spasm. It was once called variant angina. It is also known as Prince Metal Angina. As a matter of fact, when I was in medical school, that was the only name I knew, Prince Metal Angina. Now, it is called Vesospastic Angina. Epidemiologically, it is more amongst Japanese, but it can occur anywhere in the world. It is more in people less than 50 years old. It is less, needless to say anyway, that it will be less in people greater than 50. How do we make the diagnosis of vesospastic angina? There will be angina at rest. This is associated with coronary artery spasm, and that will be evidence on coronary artery angiogram. It's going to occur mostly between night and early morning, and it will be relieved by giving nitrous and calcium channel block. It will be aggravated by hyperventilation, ergot, acetylcholine, and so on. Decreased exercise tolerance will occur early morning in affected individuals, like someone who goes around jogging every morning, now down with vesospastic angina, he or she will not be able to tolerate that exercise early in the morning anymore. When you run your EKG or ECG, depending on whether you are in Europe or North America, you are going to find ST elevation and you will find ST depression. We find U waves and R waves that are tall and broad. All these EKG changes or ECG changes will resolve immediately after nitroglycerin and calcium channel block administration. Still, part of diagnosis will include cardiac enzyme assay. You know what? It will be normal. But don't say, I'm not going to run it because Dr. Soso said it's going to be normal. No. Running so that you rule out my cardiac infarction. You can have coronary angiography done, an ambulatory ECG monitoring, stress test, mm -hmm, you might do it, but it will be normal. Part of the diagnosis is complete blood count, electrolyzed blood, real nitrogen, creatinine, random blood sugar, lipid profile, and toxicology screen. You can embark on provocation test, that is, you can reproduce the chest pain signs and symptoms using ergot, hyperventilation, dopamine, metacholine. No adrenaline, serotonin, acetylcholine, exertion, increased vega tone. But one good thing here is if you are carrying out this provocation test and you run into trouble using these medications, these are reversible with nitrates and calcium channel block. Still, you can provoke or reproduce the symptoms by increasing activity, also increasing sympathetic stimulation or hyperventilation. There are certain triggers, generators. So if this is genetic in origin, no, already, already there, so there's nothing you can do about it, then insulin resistant diabetes mellitus could be a trigger, smoking, increased autonomic activity, and someone with myocardial infarction undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention might have vesospastic angina trigger. Apomagnesemia, that's low level of magnesium that could lead to, to that point, to that point leading to ventricular tachycardia, then to ventricular fibrillation, and vesospastic angina already triggered by that.
also botulinism, cocaine and vitamins, and other medications that could provoke you know, these very uh, phenomena, like ergot, acetylcholine, serotonin, histamine, adrenaline, dopamine, metacholine, and increased vigatone. All this could trigger it. Now, clinical features is such that this will be chronic in nature. And the likelihood of recurrency is very high. So there's going to be, or it's likely going to be, that the affected individual will have recurrent episodes. There will be pain at rest, and the pain at midnight to early morning. That is very significant here. The pain may be lasting between 5 to 15 minutes or even greater in some people, and it will be gradual in onset. It's not going to be associated with position or respiration. It will be you no know, substana in location. Also, it could present with nausea and vomiting, sweating profusely. Some will feel dizzy. This near is possible and, of course, heart raising. The pain may radiate to the neck, the throat, the lower jaw, the teeth, upper limb, and shoulder. And many times, the patient could present with non-specific chest discomfort, like chest fullness, a band-like sensation, like lump in the throat, ache, heavy chest, heartburn, burning, strangling, constriction, pressure, tightness, or squeezing. Is this my kind of infarction? You're not sure. Okay, I do make quick judgment to say, oh, this is not myocardial infarction. This is prismental or this is spastic angina. Okay. Age. This is going to occur in people younger, younger age group, less than 15. The timing of the day in myocardial infarction doesn't give you time. But here, it's going to be early morning. Midnight to early morning, so not in the afternoon. Okay, risk factors the risk factors are shared with myocardial infarction will be less compared to this. This is associated with renal phenomena and with migraine, and it's also associated with abuse of drugs I mean, street drugs. But I will not confuse you on that abuse of drug. I mean, street drug will also be found in my current fashion. So, we have to be very careful about that. What are the possible differential diagnoses here? My current fashion, of course. Angina pectoris, ST elevated my current fashion, or non ST elevated my current fashion. Pericarditis, myocarditis, syndrome S. Taco Tuzbo syndrome or Cunning syndrome. How do you treat here nitroglycerin? But check the blood pressure before administering that. Because once the BP is 90 over 60 or below, please hold the nitroglycerin. And find out if this person has taken nitrates before now. If that is the case, no nitroglycerin right now. Then we can. Make use of long acting nifedipine, amylodipine, isosorbine mononitrate, clonidine, guanetidine, silosazole. Also, fasodine, that is a rokinase inhibitor, statins, magnesium, depending on what the laboratory investigations will reveal, right? Quacutaneous coronary intervention, if Coronary angiography with coronary angiogram being reported is showing occlusion and, of course, lifestyle changes. Still, part of the treatment is knowing what to avoid. We will not use non selective beta blockers here. If you want to use aspirin, be careful. All treatments avoid. 5-fluorouracil, avoid. 
What are the possible complications? Myocardial infarction, life-threatening arrhythmias, and death from a particular arrhythmia here, that is ventricular fibrillation. Remember, I said from hypomagnesemia, we can end up with ventricular fibrillation, run into tosade pump, ventricular tachycardia, going to polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, and then ventricular fibrillation. Finally, the prognosis. Greater than 90% of affected people will survive this. May five years survival, right? Greater than 90% will do. The prognosis is, is generally good on one condition, that is, if treated promptly. Half of the affected people will continue to have relapse. There might be sudden death if they associated ventricular fibrillation. With that, I'll come to the end of this very short presentation as per Prince Meta Angina, now known as Vesospastic Angina. Remember to share this. Remember to check my channel for other presentations on atrial fibrillation, heart failure, heart attack, plus one to six. I appreciate it.